Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. Last week we went over defining a brief um, and looking at the world or your world's problems as opportunities for designing better solutions to them. I went with the default brief of just designing an everyday carry bag that better suits all of my everyday carry objects. I have to apologize, we have a wood chipper. The next door neighbors are using a wood chipper. So I'm gonna try and record this best I can, but there might be a little bit of pauses uh, if it gets too loud. Next, we went into the research process of kind of seeing what's out there, seeing what different industries have to offer, kind of different solutions to this problem. And then we went into some just orthographic sketching to kind of commit some of those design elements to um, our mind. Now we're gonna take a look at the ideation process and we're going to get even more sketchy than this. I like to use just small pieces of paper, sticky notes, post-it notes are great. Uh, it can all be done on just like scratch paper as well but I like small paper and then just a big pen. So I go with my Sharpie. The idea there is we're going to work from big to small. We're not gonna focus on tiny details. We will be thinking about them, uh, things we liked from other designs, things we didn't like, um, but moving from the big kind of form of the object to the details. So we will be adding these in to our final drawings, but for this set of drawings, of ideation sketches, we're just gonna do big to small. So looking back to some of the things I discovered in the research process, and I kind of mentioned this, was that I noticed the straps all seem to connect towards the back panel. Um, and one of the iterations we did was just to push that towards the middle section. Um, and that was because many of these and most of the waist packs are designed to be worn around the waist, right? Like a fanny pack. Um, and they're designed to be either worn on the front or the back, um, mostly so that many users with different preferences can use these objects. Since I'm designing this for me, I just have to design it for the one kind of, um, if I don't want that option to put it on my waist or to switch it around, if I know I'm just going to wear it on my front kind of chest, upper chest, and then have it wrapped down around my waist and up over my shoulder, which is what I'm thinking, kind of a cross body rather than a waist bag, then I want to design with that in mind. So I think that's going to be the most important thing to look at here first, because that's the large kind of form factor of my design. So just keeping that in mind, I don't have to design it to fit around the waist. And the first thing that comes to mind is instead of it being kind of this, you know, flat, straight thing that you wear horizontal to the ground plane, <clears throat> I want it to wrap up. Here's my head. I want it to wrap up like this, kind of more like a sling. So I think we can design it as such. So even just like with the basic, like this. <laughs> this is a great example. These sketches do not have to be pretty. Um, we're just kind of feeling things out. A lot of these just get thrown in the waste bin, but then we take elements of each one we like. So just so you guys know what I'm thinking, I'm thinking more like this. And what that makes me kind of start to consider is that what I've noticed in taking a waist bag and wearing it as a cross body bag is you get a lot of kind of sag or just um, separation from the body, especially if as more weight gets up into here, this pulls right here. So maybe actually designing for that would be a good idea. So taking into account that we don't want it to go from straight to diagonal, let's design kind of a di diagonal sling. A little bit of curve to it. And then the other thing I was noticing was a lot of these seemed like they were just straps with kind of geometric objects um, plunked on them. And so it's kind of like a modular design. Um, and I don't know if I like that. I kind of want it to be more organic to my body. So I liked that about this one, how it was just straight across. So keeping that in mind. And then I did like aspects of this one, the more geometric. So trying to take all of that into account, moving to a more diagonal strap, Maybe flat across the top, but then getting a little bit more geometric. And so I'm going to try and echo this diagonal design. But maybe not like so square, right? I don't want it to be um, kind of super utilitarian looking. So now, just clean that up a little bit. Maybe come straight down there. And I'm going to extend, I think, this one longer, trying to echo that diagonal little asymmetrical design. And then I liked, this one was more like a bladder kind of effect. It was really big, but what I did like was that it had this extension, which I think will play into that diagonal strap design. Um, 
So actually making this kind of part of it too. Maybe the actual storage part ending there. Okay, so that's the first, this, as far as silhouettes go, that's the first one I'm kind of happy with there. You, you can see I haven't even started looking at compartments or zippers yet. I'm just looking at how it's going to fall on my body. Um, I think a little bit longer coming here, putting most of the weight down here, because that's where it'll fall anyway. And then within that, I can add some of like the separators and stuff to organize my items. What I've noticed is when there's not that, if it's just one big compartment in there, you throw everything in and they all kind of just settle down here. Um, also creating that kind of sag and pull, it pulls away from the body. So maybe adding some really smart thought out compartments will help hold the stuff in place and equally kind of disperse it. Some of the best bag designs I've seen, uh, more so in backpacks and things, is where, let's see if I can draw this for you guys, is where, you know, if you just look at like a basic Jansport backpack, you know, great backpack, but it kind of, you throw everything in there and if there's just one big compartment, it all kind of settles down in here. Your books and everything, and like this is all wasted space. So in a great designed backpack, it's, I've seen where they have like, you know, different compartments to hold different things. And so then everything is utilized and it keeps it really nice and clean, but you fit a lot more and it's everything is where you need it to be. So then when you open it up, you know, you put like sunglasses up here, computer against the back, but kind of float it off the bottom so that you could have like your coat or whatever down here, other things in here. So then it closes up and everything is where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to aim for something similar to that in my crossbody bit. Okay, so that's a good general design, I think. Uh, other things like looking back at our research ones was most of these had zippers kind of across the front, and this one even had that like elastic string situation. I don't know if I want that much like just visual texture on the front. I want this to kind of, I don't want it to grab attention. Mo you know, it's pretty utilitarian, so I just want it there for me to use, but I don't want it to be like a statement piece. So in general, I'm probably just going to be like all like a matte black or like a satin black, but then I don't want any of this cording on the front and probably not even a zipper compartment. So I would decide to put maybe a zipper on top. Um, this one, I think had it up here on top. We can't see it in the straight on view and it came down here. Um, so I'll do that and then that'll just keep the front really clean. So other things to consider are maybe looking at that kind of tapered wedge to the nylon strap. And if I know I am, let's go back to this little drawing. If I know I am going to wear it up on my shoulder, let's take a zoomed in look at this here. So this comes up, but this would be where all the stuff gets stored. Maybe this is a really nice, long, tapered piece that's more than just nylon, that actually has some, like not too thick, not not quite like a hiking backpack strap, but somewhere in between that and just a simple nylon strap. So just really thin, but with a little bit of cushion, because sometimes like, like nylon webbing, I think I have it like on here, sometimes this can get kind of frayed or whatever they use to seal that end. Uh, can be kind of stiff and pokey, and so you don't want that like rubbing against your neck. So maybe just something a little bit fabric wrapped that adds some nice um, comfort to the neck, but also maybe some padding to the shoulder, depending on how heavy this gets. So that kind of wraps up the top of the bag. Long, kind of padded top strap portion, and then I think if we were to like look at this from a side view, so you kind of have the bag on the front, maybe around, kind of comes around the waist right here, up and over the shoulder. And then it probably, we could taper it into just a nylon strap, just to keep it nice and thin. That way, if you're wearing a coat or something, it's not going to add too much bulk up the back. Um, and then this would all be a nylon strap up there. Now, this also kind of makes me think of a waist pack where we would have um, usually even if it had these little tapered areas, it kind of, the nylon part comes around, usually has these like little tightening parts and then kind of a plastic buckle. Um, and that makes sense, right? Because that way you can bring it around and like fasten it on the back or you can flip it around. You can take it off from either um, end. What I found on my bag is 
the one I have currently, I think they placed it right here. Um, and then when I put it up on my shoulder, it kind of digs into my shoulder and my neck again. So maybe knowing that I'm going to wear it with my head up here and kind of this down towards my like hip or my waist area, um, that would be the most comfortable kind of place to unclip it. Or if I like throw it, throw the strap over and bring it around and clip it in, that would be the place. So I know I'm going to like center mine over here. Um, and then do I really want a clip would be another thing. Like all these things are, I think every single one of these had um, a clip, except we, we did look at those super fancy ones that had like a belt buckle um, rather than like a plastic clipping buckle. Um, I think as long as it has a way to adjust, maybe we put in one of these like long, this one comes in and we can tighten it through tension. Maybe what I've seen is down here on this end, so coming out of the tapered area of the bag, it has maybe a little um, kind of bloop de loose situation. And then this part, the nylon webbing, could be attached to some sort of like hook. Kind of thing you'd see like I, I think they're pretty popular on biker bags um, or like uh, courier bags so then it slides into let's do I'll draw that a little bit clearer so this would be that tapered part on the bag and then there's just maybe some sort of like nylon loop for a hook to fit into I'll come back here and like really fastened with some nice stitching right there and then you have kind of this nylon so it can be pulled and tightened if you need be from the waist and you can just slip the hook you know right into there to fasten it and it has this like little I think kind of dimpled end so it kind of catches right here a little bit so it doesn't just slide out too easily um, but that might be like a sleeker kind of solve for the plastic buckle. Okay, so, so you can see I'm just like throwing a lot of ideas out here. I don't, I'm not being too precious with any of them. What's great about sticky notes is you can start to organize them. So I kind of like that as my silhouette. Maybe this is the connection point down here. This was just illustration. Okay. Um, that was kind of showing that taper of that one. Um, the other thing, once we start to dive into some more of the details of here, might be a good idea to make a list of what you're going for. So that was kind of the big form factor of the outside. Um, but then moving into what I would call like the hard points we think back to uh, designing kind of cars or around cars, it's it's like taking into account the mechanics of it, the safety features, and then like maybe being able to fit people in there, like how many passengers. Those are all things that you build the aesthetics of a car around. So you have to know what is like mandatory. We have to fit in there. So I need to fit, you know, first it needs to have organization for all my things. You know, and that's a separate kind of category of uh, the most important one, I think, was my wallet and my glasses, um, a pen, chapstick, and keys. That's kind of the bare minimum. And then other things, you know, once you get past those hard points would be kind of what am I aiming for? And you can already see I started to reference would be, you know, the aesthetic of it. So I was trying to, I'm going for like sleek and minimal. Um, and then the other thing would be, and this is a smaller point, but we talked about kind of, I think I referenced it on here, you know, maybe a place for the keys, like a little D ring or something that gives it quick access. And my only thought about that is if that was the case, and it was, you know, on 
a bag somewhere and you attached it and you're wearing it, there's going to be a lot of noise. Same thing if you have any like bulky um, zippers, you get a lot of noise. And I think as like a subcategory of sleek, I would want mine to be kind of quiet. So those are kind of design details I'm trying to keep in mind as I'm de designing this. Um, and then I guess ergonomic or just comfort, like comfortability. So just comfort. So those are the three big aesthetic things for mine. And then these are what I have to fit into it. So that's a good idea to have this on hand, especially if you're designing your bag. Okay, so I feel like I've accomplished kind of the comfort of this tapered kind of softer fabric coming up to the shoulder and then turning into a nylon, coming down here into a buckle um, or a hook rather than like a buckle, I, I suppose. So that kind of gives my sleekness and my comfort. Um, I've, you know, made this so it's flush across here. So I think that's a nice, again, referring to the sleekness, but it is geometrical, ge geometrical, um, geometric. And then if we start to look at fitting in some of these hard points, we can dive into the inside again with the sleek, you know, I'm, I don't, didn't do any outside pockets. I want to keep it all kind of interior, very minimal. So we could start looking at maybe like an overhead view what this would look like you're imagining this is where the taper is coming in i think i would just have one main zipper um and we we i mentioned this last time but maybe placing the zipper up here because uh, it's just easier to pull down when you want to open something um than pulling up so since this would be my head up here i'd start the zipper here and i'd round down there all things to take into consideration other things that, and these are getting into very detailed things that you might want to uh, hold off until later, but you know, how durable do you want this zipper? Do you want it to be waterproof, like gusseted, um, or just like your standard backpack zipper? Um, do you want it to have some resistance or be like really smooth moving? All of those come into factors. I don't think it needs to be waterproof or anything like that. The one thing that I would, and this might be another like thing for later, is like I want a big buckle. Like I like the size. Of, or like a zipper tab. I, I like the size of the zipper tab because it's going to be easy to find um, and unzip. So that is going to play into my design. Um, then one main compartment. So then when you start designing, you have to start fitting these things. Let's get rid of this guy. In there. It might help to do kind of just like another straight on view. So let's turn this straight. And maybe pull out, just to get an idea, so glass case, wallet, this is my pen, chapstick, and keys. So all of that stuff has to fit in there. And how are you best going to do that? Um, like I said, maybe having some sort of like secure organization. What I've noticed in some bags is they have some little bit of elastic in there just to hold it tight. That way, thing you after you throw it in there, it just doesn't like start to wander about the cabin uh, while you're moving. So maybe if this is going to be the top where the zipper opens, and you know it'll open from there to here, giving you access. Maybe using this kind of design line, you can build like a pocket. Maybe I'll leave room for like the wallet over here, but maybe I want the glasses. I'm thinking the glasses and the wallet are going to be the two biggest items to fit in there. Um, so how are they going to interact? I think I want the glasses because a lot of people don't have these like glass cases, but they might just have sunglasses that they could throw in here. So you want this to be kind of protected. And I feel like that's going to be safer up here on my body, whereas if it gets lower towards my hip, you know, I might bump into a table or something. So I don't know if I want like a loose sunglass or if I just throw these in there. To be unprotected as much as that so maybe keeping that up here and just having like a little simple also thinking the orientation is going to be like this so maybe keeping this flush across here and then this part will be a little elastic band um i like the idea of having kind of a mesh pocket so you can see if anything gets dropped in there or if you lose a piece you can see it doesn't get lost into the kind of the abyss 
But for glasses, if they're not in a case, if they're in a case, it's fine. But if they're not, uh, the you don't want like if you were to toss something else in here, like keys, to kind of poke through there. So maybe having something a little bit more substantial or like fleece lined or something just to protect the lenses would be a good idea. Uh, for mine, they're in a case, so I think mesh would be okay. And then same thing over here. It's gonna take up that area. It was a little bit wider on the bottom, so instead of being it's maybe long ways. Hmm. Putting the other pocket over here, same thing. Mesh. And we're left with this kind of like triangle area that we have to like fill up. So how are we going to do that? Um, my first idea was to put the keys on some sort of like D ring, um, but I don't remember. I'm aiming for quiet, so I don't love this idea. They could fit nicely into here. That's a possibility, um, but I like the idea of having, like, I think this would work almost better. I um, mean, what I've noticed in, like, this kind of bag is just like the Jansport backpack I was referencing, you, like, put everything in here, but it all ends up settling in the bottom, and none of this upper space gets utilized. So maybe having a way to fasten these up here, and it doesn't have to be anything complex. It could just be, like, those little dividers you see um, like in the, the front pouch of the Jansports where it just has like a little piece of like nylon kind of separation there, like a little simple stitch, just so it's a place to stick the pens. Um, it might be as simple as that. And that way it would keep uh, my pen in place and it wouldn't like float down here and then get all this bulk down here. So maybe just something like that, but then like a smaller one for your chapstick or you could do two pens, because it's still probably enough resistance to hold two pens in there. And maybe something like that. And then the other thing I didn't really mention is my phone. My phone's recording right now, and usually I actually have it in my hand, or I don't mind having that in my pocket. Or if it's like... Um, in my car, I'll use it for music. So it's something I don't often think about putting in one of these, but maybe like a simple, I don't want to dirty up the front or comp complicate the front, but maybe like a little slip pocket on the back might be a good idea for uh, if I did want to throw it in there, just have everything in one place. Or if I have loose, I don't know, change, post-it notes, um, receipts or something, I could just throw it in there and nothing too complex. I don't really want so from a back view, if we come from that tapered area, And this is where that buckle would attach and wrap back around. Maybe just having like a little kind of slot here. And I'm thinking something, I grabbed a few bags just to have as an example, but maybe something simple like you can see on this one. I wouldn't put a zipper, but maybe just like a two fold like this so it wouldn't fall out if I was, I don't know, jogging, running away from someone. But like, if you want to just put it so then you could slide it in and then it would hold it semi-secure, but nothing like too substantial. Okay, so that organizes all this stuff and, you know, it has a place on the back. I would, don't know if I'd put keys in there because it would poke through. It's just going to be really slim with the, not really any substantial kind of thickness to it, where this would be, you know, about that thickness of those things. Um, so I still have to solve for the keys. Now, what comes to mind is putting the keys kind of down here where my hip would be because that'd kind of be you know a doorknob or a lock would be kind of right in that area so i might not even have to take them off which would be nice but i'm just kind of afraid that we're still going to have that jingly jangly effect which i'm not a fan of um looking back at these drawings we did when we were researching 
I'm thinking about like this connection point here at the back panel or at the mid panel. So I want to make mine, I think, from the front. So if we were looking down on this bag um, and you have like the bulk of it, the buckle attachment over here, get the zipper on top, and then this comes up over your shoulder. I think I want to make this panel kind of almost, it could be one continuous, there doesn't even have to be a connection point, one continuous kind of line up and up over the shoulder. So you get, um, but I wouldn't want this empty space right here, so I'd actually make this part of that and then go into that kind of thicker padded shoulder piece. So we do get this nice negative space there, and it gives you kind of access to the zipper, which can kind of come all the way down to here. You could also, you could put like a little, you know, D-ring or even like a leash, just like a simple kind of like where it attaches and then has maybe like a little button on it that clips and then you just can put your keys right there and just pull, pull tab it. Um, some sort of fastening system in here and then you could, the keys would be attached here but then they would rest right in here. I think that, and then that would keep them because the gravity would keep them down. It would be an opening that wouldn't be you know, fastened or closed, but they would be secured in there, but they wouldn't jingle because they'd be held down in that kind of pocket. And I think, let's see if I have one, it kind of be like this, where here's the bulk of the bag, and then this is the padded part here. So you have this little kind of pocket, and if you attached, you know, your keys up here, and then they fell down to the way of the bag, and then you put it over your shoulder, it's going to pull tight and hold them kind of in place. On your body. I think that could work really nicely. And then there, it's that's like the closest part too, so it'd be easy to reach in, detach them. If it was on like a button leash like this, you could just pull hard and it would pop, and then you could um, unlock the door and then re-button them in later. So that could work for that. Okay, so let me put that on a page. Now other things, as we're like getting some of these bigger ideas figured out, actual construction so then this is let's draw the thickness of the bag here and then some sort of fastener for your keys right down there and then that still leaves room for the zipper to come down here and attach now the, I don't know if I want to get the zipper mixed up with the keys another detail I've seen and I haven't seen this on many of my bags but on these oddly enough on these pants like the zipper kind of tucks into this little um i don't know what you call it like a zipper garage or like a little thing it's just like a nice little it doesn't take much um i think it's because this is the the back part of the pants so they didn't want the zipper thing to scratch up any like chairs so it kind of just tucks in there and keeps it flush um, but the other thing it does, if this was, if you can imagine this on top of like a bag, crossbody bag, as it wraps down, it's going to keep the zipper pointed up towards my hand to pull, right? So instead of it like just flopping down into the keys, it's going to take, put it in there and make it nice and clean and pretty, but also keep that big zipper facing up. So when I pull, I can have access and it's not going to get lost. So maybe incorporating a small detail like that. Just that simple piece of fabric will help position that large zipper clip facing up. It won't get mingled in with the keys. Easy for me to grab, pull it open, reach in here to that kind of mesh glass case. The wallet's facing that way. I have a pen, chapstick right there. I like that. And then this will like sew that down and this will turn into some sort of like padded strap going across the back. Nothing too complex. I don't want... I don't think any storage or anything on that. Just a little bit of comfort kind of padding. So that was it. Let's see, go over there. That was a bad idea. Um, and then other things, maybe for this guy, another detail, kind of similar to that zipper garage. Maybe instead of just having kind of this loop-de-loo here where that can tie in, maybe actually having that um, same idea coming from this front panel and back panel, so it'll have some thickness to it. 
So here's looking down on the bag and then the zipper comes down here. Maybe not as long as you'd need it for keys, but something like that. And then that loop comes here. And then you have the buckle, which would just come in and hook through there. But maybe having this kind of like piece of sheath around it so you don't see that connection point. And then when that metal buckle is hooked in there, all you see is the black nylon. So it kind of goes from black nylon to the black sheath. And so you kind of reduce all of that. Whatever the material is you use to hook it up, the shiny glare. I've seen it in bags like, kind of like this. This is a dramatic solution, but instead of seeing all of how this kind of hooks in there, it's just in this sheath. So then it could go from like my bag to a nice sheath to the nylon. And again, it would probably reduce any kind of rattle there might be. It's a nice way to clean that up. Um, other things, and these are just minor things that I was kind of thinking about would be like, I really admire, um, in the same vein of like looking at a Jansport, um, and I have nothing against Jansport. Jansports are great. I've had one for forever. But things that I noticed were like, when we have, when it comes down and you kind of, you can open, only open it from there to that midway point, you don't know what's going on down here. I think I, uh, one of the students told me a story where they lost a banana. It turned black, got lost into the abyss of the, darkness of the backpack bottom and they didn't find it until like the end of the school year and you can just imagine it being pulverized by all these books and stuff down there um i love when you have like the ability for the zipper to go all the way down and then there's kind of a gusset almost so if this is the back half the zipper goes all the way down you kind of get this filing system and this clamshell effect where you can actually open up all the way you can see this like back corner you can see this front corner because it just gives you this little bit more range of motion in there uh, without destroying the stability of the bag. That's what the gusset does. I love that effect. So maybe, I don't know if I need it in such a small bag, but if I were to do it, it would have to be somewhere, you know, maybe have the zipper go down a little bit further and add that gusset effect in here. I'll show you an example of that. Kind of on this bag, when you zip this down, so it goes further, it goes all the way to the bottom but then it has that, so I can actually see what's down in there. Instead of it stopping and me not knowing what's going on, I can look all the way down in there. This is another great, this one goes all the way to the bottom and opens all the way up. So you can see, you never get lose anything. Great for organization. I don't know if I'll need that, but that might be a design feature um, I think about when I get to the final drawing. So I think I figured out the whole the silhouette, the main zipper on top. So I have a picture of that back that I drew. I think I drew it on here. Um, we went through the hard points. It's going to fit all my stuff. Kind of like this. Okay, and then keys on a leash up here. Some sort of buckle down here. Padded strap around the shoulder. Feeling pretty happy with some of the stuff that some of the unique sales points of this kind of design. You can see how most of this stuff isn't even in like a th a perspective drawing or a three quarter view. Much of it is like straight on, uh, straight on, straight from the top. This is kind of the only one that shows a little bit of perspective and depth thickness to the actual bag. Maybe this one a little bit. Um, but it's really just for me just trying to figure out as simply as I can how this thing is going to be designed. Um, from the big elements down to the small. But the big takeaway here is that we're just using small paper, big pen, because we're trying to stay away from all the details. Yeah, we're kind of considering them, but get your big kind of form factors first. We're, if we use a small pen, we're going to be too focused on getting like really clean, perfect lines. You can see these are not beautiful drawings that barely drawings at all. They're more like me figuring out problems. Um, and then from this, we can start to design on a larger sheet of paper with a little bit more fine tipped pen, a better designed, better drawn uh, final result of this kind of compiling all these into one. But this kind of helps me weed out a lot of those bad ideas. And you can see how I worked through some of the other ideas I really like. I'm kind of excited about this key option, really simple, but I think just like 
The zipper in there will be with the little garage door. It's going to be a great solve for that. This buckle is going to be a nice clean solve for that. Um, maybe one thing I haven't addressed too much is this back portion. So this is the front organization, the clip or hook. The keys would be here. This goes over here with a little bit of padding. I think this is going to be pure nylon. And then maybe we'll have like a little extra piece and maybe design some way to fasten this onto here. Sometimes there's like those, there's those little black um, things that kind of with tension would hold it tight. That'd be a really simple fix. Maybe something a little bit more elegant. I've seen on some backpacks, they have little pieces of like Velcro that you just wrap around and it holds it tight. Um, but it's probably pretty simple back there. Not too much going on. Here's that. And maybe it's just something like that would be an easy enough solve. Okay, so we're going to take these. Um, I'm going to bring out some more scratch paper. Remember, this is just, it's like, it's process after process, getting closer and closer to a final result. Um, don't expect to have a beautiful drawing, like, especially when you're figuring out problems like this right off the get-go. So I'm going to pull out some more scratch paper, some printer paper. Um, have all three pens on hand, and I'm just going to start kind of like how we were doing the orthographic sketches. I think that'd be a good way to approach this now that I have kind of my own take on a lot of those research drawings. I'm gonna repeat that same orthographic process going from like front, maybe top, maybe a back view to kind of help explain what's going on here. Um, and then we can jump into a three quarter view and decide which angle and which lighting is gonna be best to describe some of these features that makes this product so unique. So you can see I took the information I gained from doing these kind of ideation sketches with just a big marker and simple messy sketches and I tried to kind of clean up some of the ideas starting with my light fine tipped pen whatever you have a uh, ballpoint pen works great um, kind of really lightly sketching stuff out a lot of the stuff I didn't even keep and then uh, when you get something you like going around the contour to make it pop off the page with a little bit medium weight pen a little bit thicker pen a uh, felt tip works great but everything's relative as long as it's just a little bit thicker and then you can add some weight lines or contact shadows with your sharpie i'm still not i like this feels like i've resolved that well i like that kind of sheath over the buckle um it'll be pulled back and then fastened some way i think that describes kind of what i'm trying to think of with the keys a little bit better this whole silhouette feels nice to me i like that you can kind of see on here where this connects to the back panel this is looking down and the front panel, so it kind of organically turns into that over-the-shoulder strap right there. This one I'm going to contact kind of right here at the back panel, so it'll, it'll be like this um, right here, this kind of inch or so thickness, but I think that's okay because that'll be like a natural kind of point where that'll break and turn around the kind of hip area or the waist area, so I think it'll be okay to have a little bit of thickness there. Um, and since it's not on the front plane of the body, it won't be as modular looking. I don't think, I think I can get away with that. So where this will be connected at front and back, this is just the back, but I still want to figure out this a little bit more. I'm not completely happy with that before diving into my, um, final sketch. Also, I was trying to fill up some of these negative spaces. Like I don't love, you know, when we're sketching, especially when we get to the final composition, I'm probably have to reorganize this so it reads a little bit better. But generally, I like to start with just some simplified sketches, trying to keep them all proportional to each other, and then kind of pull out some of this information for to do these zoomed in views or kind of see through views. Not loving this. Um, I think I have to return back to my hard points of organization and kind of look at what I can do better here. Maybe um, actually using the glasses this time. I think what's bothering me is this empty space right here. I like the idea, and what I miss is not having a place for my pen uh, like most backpacks, backpacks have. So I think 
it's this negative area right here that's just not, I don't feel like making a sleeve for my chapstick is the most kind of useful space, useful way to use that space. So maybe if we have, you know, you know the zipper in its garage will be right there. This will come, the connection point of that buckle and sheath will be right there. I think pushing this back will be okay. Um, And, you know what we could do is actually so there's that's a sew line i'm just kind of thinking about how this will be constructed maybe making this all and kind of cleaning this up this design instead of having these kind of weird pockets and maybe like doing yes a line right there and kind of up to here And then taking the elastic that kind of will give a little bit of volume. It'll be able to stretch in volume, but then we'll have the elastic kind of pulling tight so that this can't wiggle loose and fly around that bounce down here. Uh, but maybe just leaving this like triangle. Um, so then, you know, that could slide in there, but also you know, sometimes you carry other things like visine. So, you know, maybe just not making it so specific to the chapstick, but just allowing it for other things, or loose change, air pods, I, whatever we can use. I think doing that will make it more useful. And then maybe from there, pulling the, kind of making it just so it's a little bit prettier, I think maybe joining up the elastic kind of right here. So this will be so you could even do with one piece of elastic and then when you go to sew these and individualize them into their separate kind of mesh compartments and what i mean by mesh is just like this leg has a good example of it but it's kind of just like this so that's what I'm thinking. Just like a little bit see-through, stretchy volume, and then this will be a little bit tighter. And you can do the kind of same thing here where it's just laying down and then sewn over to uh, individualize the pockets. Other things I was thinking about while doing this was, you know, if the problem with the gusset to allow that clamshell effect, which wouldn't work on this side, because this whole panel is, like you can't really open it that much wider, but maybe on this side, by pushing this to the back panel, you leave this right here. Maybe this can have that gusset right here. So you can open up this really wide to get into here. Um, so you really need to get your like wallet out. So maybe that would be a good place to put this gusseting material. Um, and then I, you could drop the zipper all the way down. Instead of at the halfway point, you could drop it all the way down to here. Okay, so for this week, grab a big pen, grab a small paper, get messy. We took, we did our research. We got some ideas, lay out your stuff to find your hard points. If you're not doing a everyday carry object, you can do any old thing. You still got to do the same kind of procedure. You have to write down what you're aiming for, either like design wise, aesthetically, you know, keeping it, I want to keep this sleek, minimal, quiet, comfortable, all, all things I had to hit. I had to keep this in mind. You know, if I was designing, like we look back to last week when I was talking about a brush cleaner, uh, my hard points for that would be a little bit different. You know, it would have to be. Wow. It would have to be, um, you know, wide mouthed for cleaning area to clean the brushes, you know, stable, airtight, automatic. If it's automatic, it has to have a power source. So I have to build in where, how it gets its power. So just. This is the kind of list you want to make when you start to design, uh, going off the research, taking things you like, taking things you don't like, and figuring out what you have to fit into there, okay?
and then you start messy just you know good idea bad idea doesn't work keep the ones you like we're going to turn it into this frankenstein idea and then go back to uh, what we did for the iteration sketches and we're going to go light pen medium weight um, thick pen and then next week we'll jump into some uh, shading exercises with marcus we can get past some of these linear hatching techniques and we'll get into uh, toning uh, setting a light source and then providing shade and tone to our drawings